situation report. At 0835 hours on May the 11th, a local resident, Mrs. S. Williams, reported to the Hilborough Police Station that her two teenage sons, Brian 14 and Trevor 17, had not returned from a bush trip. They left home at approximately 0945 hours on May the 10th, saying they intended looking for gemstones in the vicinity of Mount Green, a rugged bush area about 10 kilometers from their home. Both were wearing heavy, bulky knit pullovers, woolen shirts, denim trousers and strong boots. They were traveling light with a knapsack and geology pick. Trevor had a clasp knife. Their food consisted of two picnic lunches and they took water in an army disposal water bottle. Mrs. Williams said the boys had been on bushwalks previously, but never for this length of time. It was Brian she was worried about. He was a diabetic and did not have his insulin with him. The report was received by police search and rescue at 0855 hours, and search controller makes an immediate decision to send out an air search from the local aero club. Uh, police search and rescue here, Inspector Howard speaking. Could you give us assistance within the search uh, around the Mount Green area? I have a couple of lads lost out there. Have you got your map? Oh, good. I'd like you to do a search over an area of approximately 20 square kilometres on the north side of Mount Green. We'll do an extensive sweep of the area and let you know if we have a result. With the aircraft is a police officer as observer who will report on the police frequency. At search headquarters, the search controller has appointed his field controller and instructs him to send in a ground party immediately to reconnoitre the area and report back by radio. Four policemen of the search and rescue squad, or four experienced bushmen, now report to the search and rescue section as soon as possible after the call. Essentials for each man are a sleeping bag, a lightweight three-man tent, field rations and a small stove, one half-axe or machete, and full wet-weather gear. The radio operator's personal equipment will be distributed among the other three. The transceiver is a VHF of the portable type, ranging between 1 and 25 watts, depending on the terrain. The party uses a specially designed vehicle, equipped to handle most search and rescue situations. The squad also takes a caravan, which will be their field base, and a guide to any other search groups coming to the field rendezvous. At search headquarters, the search controller alerts groups which might be needed in case of a full-scale search. The liaison officer, the local bushwalking club. The local controller of civil defence and emergency services to set up a field headquarters. A welfare organisation to provide food. The local army depot, council or bus company to provide transport. As the area has no water, a water tanker is requested from the Rural Fires Board. National Grid 1 to 100,000 metric scale maps of Derwent Sheet 8312 from the Department of Lands and Surveys. St John Ambulance to handle any immediate first aid problems. The Police Public Relations Office to liaise with press, radio and television. Closing in from the south. Uh, I can't see any sign of life at all. Over. No sign of life. All right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Right. 
Meanwhile, in an adjacent room, the controller's deputy briefs the various group liaison officers. If this becomes a full-scale search, all groups will rendezvous at the 18-kilometre main road turn-off on the Broadmarsh Road at grid reference 198722. Nine kilometres along the Broadmarsh Road is the Mount Green turn-off. Somewhere along this road, we will set our field headquarters. The field controller decides to use 21 bushwalkers in three parties of seven. So the briefing goes on, with every detail being thrashed out at length. Search party to base. We're at grid reference EN105738. We've made a quick search, but there's no sign of the lads. The weather's holding at the moment, but it's getting murky. Uh, we recommend a full-scale search. Over. At the rendezvous point, the field controller marshals his group. From now on, all decisions in the field will be his responsibility. group has prepared enough food kept in hot boxes for 55 men. Should the search extend over any period, the welfare organization has a backup group ready to keep the meals coming forward. Meanwhile, field headquarters is taking shape. The bushwalking party now divides into three parties of seven walkers, which are given the designations Alpha, Bravo and Charlie. The field controller gives the elected leaders of each party the grid areas they're to search, the radio scared and frequency to be used. Portable radio transceivers are issued to each group leader and individuals' names are recorded before the parties depart. And so a well-organized bush search begins. situation is to locate and save the life of a missing person or persons. Simple? Yes, but maybe it's an oversimplification. When a search party goes into bush, mountains or desert, despite the best backup organization available, even the best laid plans can go awry. There's a technique for each type of search, taking into account terrain and the prevailing weather conditions. The object of this film is to recommend basic bush search techniques realizing that in some situations, trackers, dogs, helicopters, even trail bikes may be used. For contact searches, there's the parallel sweep, where enough searches are used to cover the whole area in one sweep. The creeping line ahead, where you don't have the numbers, and the contour search on ridge or hill. Right, now let's look at each method more closely. In a small area of high probability from the baseline, each individual member is in visual contact with those on each side of him. The leader usually controls his team from the center. In creeping line ahead, the parallel search continues from the datum line blazed as the party changes direction at the end of the search sector. In a ridge search, the area is crisscrossed to the ridge line and a hill is searched in spiral fashion.
Now, here's the situation report. Mrs. S. Williams called at the Hillborough Police Station to report her two teenage sons, Trevor, 17, and Brian, 14, were overdue from a gemstone expedition in the rugged Mount Green area, about 10 kilometres from their home. The reason for a full-scale search was that Brian was a diabetic and did not have his insulin with him. At police search and rescue, the search controller sent in a reconnaissance group, then called in his various liaison officers for briefing by the field controller. When the reconnaissance party recommended a full-scale search, the search group moved to the rendezvous point in the Mount Green area. Here, the searchers were divided into three groups of seven, Alpha, Bravo and Charlie with the reconnaissance group Delta in reserve. The field controller, on whose decisions the entire operation rests, briefs party leaders, gives out grid references and portable radio transceivers from 1 to 25 watts, depending on the terrain. The focus of attention will be on Charlie party. The liaison clerk checks the names of the party as they depart. They're identified as members of a search party by armbands or bright pack strips, which have a special use later. The field controller tells Delta Party they're being held in reserve. The operations room for this search is small, manned by the field controller, staff officer and liaison clerk. The liaison clerk fills in the search state board, which will tell the field controller at a glance party designations. Party tasks. Individual grid references, the all important radio sked times, and a remarks column. Another board tells him the names of each searcher and his party. In the communications annex, the staff is a signals officer and a messenger. This radio net is on the state emergency and police frequencies. Charlie Party have now reached the area there to search. The leader explains this will be a contact search, that is, an extended line with each member in visual contact with the man next to him. Each member of the party carries a whistle, but only the leader gives the four signals. One to stop, two to start, three for distress, and four to call the party to number off. Other party members use only one blast to stop, or three for distress. Other ways to attract attention are gunshots, the sound being made through a gun barrel, a reed horn and such. Men on the extreme right and left flanks put down the markers, pieces of brightly coloured surveyor's tape. They'll mark the area of search about every 22 metres. To date, Charlie Party has not found any clues to the whereabouts of the lads, but the search is meticulous and painstaking. Some time later that one of the members of Charlie Party finds the first clues to the lad's whereabouts, wrapping paper, crusts and fruit peel. This is Charlie. Do you read me? Over. Charlie, this is Base. Go ahead. We found the place the lads had lunch. We're all pretty tired, but we want to press on. What do we do? Over. Base to Charlie, wait out. Well, 
The radio message is recorded by the staff officer, who then passes it on to the field controller. The field controller now has to make the decision whether to let Charlie press on or send in the fresh Delta party. He decides to let Charlie party keep searching and radios his decision back. Three hours later, Charlie party is now in jeopardy due to fatigue. In other words, they're overreaching themselves. Who is at fault? The leader for not assessing his party's endurance or the search controller for not relieving them? discovers he's moving out of his grid area, so calls in his party while he calls base for further instructions. This man is tired and not as alert as he would be normally. This is Charlie. One of our party is injured in a fall. He could have a broken wrist and he's slightly concussed. He can walk. What are your instructions? Over. The field controller now decides to relieve Charlie party and send in Delta. The search state board is changed, placing Charlie on reserve and Delta party on search. Delta follows Charlie's well-marked track. The leader decides on an Indian file formation as the area has already been searched. An hour later, Charlie party has returned and party members are checked off on the master list. Delta, meanwhile, carry on with the contact search. the party, the missing 17-year-old rushed to meet them. His brother, he said, had collapsed and he could not leave him alone. Base, this is Delta. Do you read me? Over. Base. Delta leader now has a problem. His radio is not functioning. The leader discusses the matter with his deputy. They decide to stay put in their present position. Question, should the leader have split his party and sent two back to base? Members of the party busy themselves laying out a visual aircraft message in a clearing. Delta is overdue on their radio skit so the field controller decides to call in the search aircraft and requests it from the search controller at search headquarters.
Delta has been spotted. Now the orange pack strips have their use. The message says, all well, require medical supplies. So there it is, the end of a demanding and monotonous search. If it happens in your particular area and you follow the recommended basic search techniques, you'll have far greater prospects of success. Thank you.